Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with our boost control in our FuelTech Manager software. So what we're going to find with FuelTech, it controls boost in a completely different manner than other standalones. Typical standalones will have a base duty table that we're going to be commanding a certain amount of duty cycle to run to the boost solenoid. And then from there, it's going to be increasing or decreasing the boost depending on how much we send to the solenoid. Now, the normal way to control boost is going to be based on just a mat pressure target. Now, with the fuel tech controller, it's actually going to be on our wastegate pressure target. So it's going to be a little bit different concept, and we'll find it's a relatively hands-off approach to doing the tuning. We're going to simply specify a wastegate pressure target. It's going to be running its own closed-loop PID control to figure out how to get to that target and essentially taking care of the tuning process for us. It's going to be definitely be a lot easier and a lot more simplistic to set up compared to something like an AEM, a Haltech, or a MoTeC. So we're going to be delving into looking at the different control methods we have available in this video for boost, uh, time-based, gear-based, speed-based. We're also going to take a look at both using manifold pressure-based control and CO2 pressure control with a single or a dual solenoid. So there's a lot of things to cover. So let's jump in right now so we can take a look at how to set this up and how to work with our boost control. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at our boost control in our fuel tech manager software. We're gonna find a lot of flexibility in our boost control. We'll find we can do it based on time, speed, gear. Uh, we'll also find that we can base it on manifold pressure or CO2 pressure as our control source. So whether we're working with a turbo four cylinder or inline six cylinder, like a Honda B series or a 2JZ, we can typically use intake manifold pressure as our source for the wastegate control. And if we're working with a turbo V8, we normally need CO2 pressure because we have such high exhaust pressure before the turbo in our manifold that's going to make it difficult for the wastegate to be able to be controlled um, through just the manifold pressure alone. So depending on our application, we're gonna have different kinds of control. The first thing we need to do here to start working with our boost control function is we're gonna go into our map options. We can see at the top here, or in the middle of the screen, I should say, under engine settings, if we move down into map options, we're gonna find that this is gonna be populating. So I have it clicked on right now and the screen's gonna be present. Moving in here into other other functions, we're gonna find as we move down our list, our wastegate boost control. If we need to check this on, it's gonna be populating and appearing other other functions. Now before we jump into this, we need to understand that this is going to be a different implementation of boost control that you're used to working with with other standalone systems or other systems in general. Normally, we're going to be taking a look at our manifold pressure and just controlling our boost solenoid to be able to achieve the amount of boost that we want in our manifold pressure. This is going to be different. It's going to actually be looking at a wastegate pressure. We're going to have to mount a wastegate pressure sensor in our wastegate to measure what that's going to be at. Now, if we're intake manifold pressure based uh, for our pressure source, we're going to find that we can't go any higher than whatever our manifold pressure is going to be at. Now, if we're at CO2 pressure based, we have the ability to really ramp up the amount of pressure going to the top of the wastegate to really slam the wastegate valve shut to overcome really high exhaust pressures as we're going to find on a turbo V8 engine. So let's go in here to our wastegate control. We click that on here. We're going to find that if we click off the screen, then it's going to be appearing right here under wastegate boost control. So the next step here is to be configuring and setting up our input and output. So the input is going to be our wastegate pressure sensor. We're gonna go here under sensors and calibrations into inputs. Now here under my input number four, I have my wastegate pressure sensor actually installed. We'll go here to the default name. We'll move down our list here to the bottom and we're gonna be selecting here wastegate pressure. We have to select this option here or it will not work. Now the next here, the next option. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.